Hi everyone and welcome to the television studio at Lorain County Community College and specifically welcome to our conversations with Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. Marcy joins us today as she will oftentimes here inside our studios at Lorain County Community College and uh, Congresswoman welcome. Thank you Ron it's a pleasure to be on your program. And joining Marcy today is Terry Sandu. Terry is the director of our Entrepreneurship Innovation Institute, and she's also the executive director of our Workforce Development Program at Lorain County Community College. And uh, based on Terry's titles and uh, based on the Congresswoman's um, work in energy in our country, today's topic is energy and how Lorain County Community College is making a difference with energy and how your work in Congress uh, with us is hopefully really building a future for what we're doing here at Lorain County Community College. So why don't we start with um, Terry. Let's, mm -hmm. let's introduce you to the public. Tell us what you sure. do here at Lorain County Community College and sure. how it's relevant to our community and our region. So the, the Entrepreneurship Innovation Institute is basically the arm of the college that looks at company as customer. So we typically think of college and of course we're, our primary mission is to work with students and, and transitioning adults to pursue their career dreams and, and career pathways. Our, our lens at EII is to really understand the needs of our companies and, and be in constant conversation around whether it's training needs for their existing workforce or uh, as they're looking forward to the future in terms of hiring that they know that they're going to need or what the impact of new innovation is going to be on their future workforce and how do we help them plan for that share that information back to our faculty so that we can make sure that we have the right programs in place so that two years down the road, four years down the road, we have the right talent for the, to, to meet the demands of industry. So certainly in energy, this is a big topic because the technology is changing so rapidly. So we really want to help, help companies stay ahead of that and help our students understand what their place in that economy might be. So in a nutshell, you're talking to businesses, real businesses, we and talk asking to real them businesses. what they need skill-wise and students that would graduate from college. That's right. That's um, right. And what they're seeing, sense. so as people are applying and, you know, are those people getting in? If they're not getting in, what could we be doing to help them be competitive for those jobs? And specifically in the field of energy, mm -hmm. what are those businesses saying and what types of programs have you developed here and, and mm -hmm. hopefully the graduates that you're you know, sure, producing. Sure. Well, the college has a, a terrific history of working within the energy sector, certainly on our academic side. Uh, Dean Kelly Zelesnik and her faculty, um, faculty uh, like Duncan Eastup, have developed great programs, um, both with our traditional utilities, so uh, programs like with First Energy, when they had a need for line workers and really partnering with them to meet that need. Um, but we also have uh, great alternative energy programs. So I think the first in the state to have the associate degree for wind turbine technicians. We also have a solar uh, degree program. What we're doing today is we are in a partnership with Nortec, Jumpstart, and Magnet. So three of the economic development entities in Northeast Ohio, Lorain County Community College partnered with them uh, back in 2011 and we were successful in uh, receiving a grant under one of President Obama's initiatives called the Jobs and Innovation Accelerator. And what that did is it basically linked the economic development investment that we make as taxpayers with the talent investment. So our, our unit is managing a grant from the Department of Labor and we are using that to work very closely with companies in Nortec's advanced energy cluster. So these are companies developing technology uh, that may impact solar, fuel cells, wind, um, a whole range of emerging technologies that will really drive a clean energy future. We're working side by side with those companies to help understand what those talent implications are. Um, some of them have needs today. We have uh, companies that are doing, um, you know, waste to biofuel. They're growing today, so they have needs immediately. How do you help fuel, uh, fuel that talent pipeline? And some of it is really helping, again, those companies think forward and think about as that technology goes to market, what kind of talent are they going to need and how do we get our students in those pipelines? Congresswoman Kaptur, why the interest for you in energy? Why the interest for you as a public servant? Uh, is it important to have conversations about where we're at, where we were, and where we will be one day? Well, I guess because I'm old enough to remember the first Arab oil embargo and uh, developed a keen understanding in the 1970s that America was losing its independence. In fact, she'd lost her independence because of her uh, utter 
daily dependence on imported petroleum. And as I've watched the politics of America and her geopolitics change over the decades since then, it remains a very um, pivotal subject for me. Um, it is why I moved on committees in the Congress onto the Defense Committee among my other committees, because I see our soldiers dying in places that have one asset, energy. And this has governed our foreign policy in a way that I think is very counterproductive to our needs here at home, and also I think um, uses our military in a way that um, does not fully appreciate their lives mm -hmm. and the value of their lives. So I have a very strongly held view on that. And if you look at America's trade accounts, you'll see energy imports are number one category of deficit. So I have fought, I ran, one of the reasons I originally ran was to try to move America into a new energy age, and I continue that fight. It's not an easy fight. Uh, it is one that um, was 100 years in the making, the situation we face, up until the 1970s and it's going to take a while to transition. So I'm very much for America's energy independence because I view the lack of that as our chief strategic vulnerability globally. In terms of the um, programs here at Lorain County Community College, uh, we live in a part of the country that is building that future. So for example, right here in uh, Lorain County, Republic uh, Steel is making some of the parts for the natural gas boom that we are experiencing over eastern Ohio. This is going to transform the energy sector. It already is uh, in western Pennsylvania, uh, here in eastern Ohio and southern Ohio, and then other places in the country where natural gas is being brought up uh, through shale uh, and uh, other means because of technologies that we developed at the Department of Energy, by the way. But, um, here in Lorain County, to be more specific, right up in Avon Lake, the old uh, coal-fired plant, uh, we just made a major announcement, NRG, one of the most progressive energy companies in the world, has decided to buy that facility, they've done that, and they are going to transform it from a coal-fired to a natural gas-fired facility. This is, the investment will be somewhere between half a billion, well, 500 million, I can't say, 800 million, uh, almost a billion dollars in Lorain County. Imagine the economic impact of that. And this company <clears throat> is also involved in other forms of energy, in solar. If you look mm -hmm. at its green energy portfolio, they're living in the future, not the past. So to have this in Lorain County is unbelievable. I mean, to have this happen, because Absolutely. what happened around the country is a lot of these coal-fired plants were closed mm -hmm. with no follow-on. Mm -hmm. What they're facing right now is an easement issue, where they have to get easement to get from where, they, where the facility is in Avon Lake down to one of the natural gas pipelines mm -hmm. uh, that traverses in this region. And so that's the challenge they face right now, and we want to do everything we can to help them. Um, but in terms of other energy technologies here at Lorraine County Community College, you're working on sensors. Nothing could yeah. be more important than to keep our thermostats and our uh, buildings uh, where we can save 40 percent of the energy we consume just by better, right. wiser use of energy. Uh, you're developing those technologies. Uh, if we look at LEADCO, uh, with the first freshwater turbines in the country being installed, uh, the and LEADCO is Lake Erie Energy Development Corporation. Correct. It's based in Cleveland, but it has partnerships mm -hmm. all across the mm -hmm. coast. You're partnered with That's them right. as well here. Mm -hmm. If we look at our solar platforms here, just Greenfields Energy in Lorain County, as well as all of the energy companies, such as First Solar um, uh, and others growing out of NASA uh, at Brook Park, uh, we have a major solar platform, one of the three largest solar platforms in the country here in northern Ohio. Think about that. Uh, if we look at biofuels, mm -hmm. biofuels uh, yeah. all of our biomass, uh, Lorraine County is a major agricultural county. Uh, the possibility for invention, innovation related to um, the renewables that are coming off the field, we're just at the dawn of that age, just at the dawn. So you're, you're uh, playing the piano on all keys here. Well, and I, I just want to, I think it's so exciting that you, you clearly see that, the, the whole vision, which makes sense, and, and mentioning the steel companies, we have um, U.S. Steel and Republic Steel that are hiring, that are, are doing so well because of much of the investments in the energy sector, and as you mentioned, the Smart Center, the, um, which is all around microsystems commercialization and sensors and, and helping to think through what are the talent implications 
And how, how do we then translate all of this amazing, that is such an exciting announcement about the coal plant. And where my mind immediately goes is we're gonna have a couple of audiences there. You're gonna have your traditional workforce. You know, how do we help that workforce who was at the coal plant transition to these new jobs that may be some new retraining? And how do we help our young people understand what, what that future looks like? and how that affects their career decision making, you know, all the way back in middle school and high school. That decision is so important to yeah. this region because um, the plant as it exists today will be transformed, but um, they will be producing close to, I think, 900 megawatts. I can't remember the exact, mm -hmm. uh, off a of natural mm -hmm. gas. If you look at Davis-Bessey, which is an aging nuclear power plant in northern Ohio, that's a 900 megawatt plant. So with what Lorain County, its potential in that plant and other related energy facilities that could be um, built in conjunction with it, uh, this is a transformative moment for Lorain County. Yeah. It is very, very important. Why has Lorain County Community College been such a national player in development in all of these stages, offshore wind power, sensor technology, solar research and development, biofuels, the transition from coal to gas, as the Congresswoman had mentioned. From both of your perspectives, why do you think this place has become in, in many ways a national model for the development of, of, the, of these types of future energy sources? Well, um, let me say I've represented to many places and uh, uh, many communities and many educational institutions, and I would have to answer in one word, leadership. The leadership of your president, Dr. Roy Church. Um, I'll be honest and I'll tell you a secret, I asked him to run for governor of this state. I think that that man is truly not just a resource for Lorain County and this college, but is an extraordinary human being, giving his life here for the future of this region. Um, you don't find that much anymore. And so when you have it, you best appreciate it. And the leadership of the board, uh, those and those who have given their funds to this college to help it advance, uh, all the names we see on these buildings, uh, all those who give their lives to the future here, it's, it's really a very heroic um, uh, avocation. And um, uh, so I think that um, that commitment draws others to it and it brings national attention. So it's leadership and hard work. And then the implementation of that, Terry? <laughs> well, I would just say ditto to, to everything the Congresswoman said. And uh, I've been with the college now about a year and a half, but I'm a, a native to Lorain County and um, just take so much pride in this institution. It's so organic to our DNA to look at how do we both help create the jobs as well as prepare the talent. And that is so unique to community colleges. I think people today still express to me their surprise as they learn about what we do, that economic development and talent development are, we do that concurrently all the time. And you see that infused in our, it really has a day-to-day -day impact on, on how we work here. And that's the collective we, whether you are a frontline customer service person in enrollment or a dean or a faculty or a, a administrator, we all, think about those, those two roles that we play um, in helping to create jobs and talent. So, um, and that infuses everything from, you know, how do we, you know, for, so for me, AI, we're thinking about how do we help companies innovate? You know, I hear this announcement and I immediately think also about all the companies that can be in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. We have a, a wealth of manufacturing companies in this community and, and they need help. They need help to think about uh, what is that future for my company and how do I keep my workforce working? What are the new technologies that I might need to adopt to do that? And um, so there's a tremendous opportunity there to help those companies plan for the future. And um, you know, you mentioned energy efficiency and sensors. You know, we don't think about building systems and HVAC, the, the heating mm -hmm. and cooling systems and how sensor technology has revolutionized that. Uh, so it supports the common good because it, it lowers our use of, of energy, but it also creates lots of opportunity for innovation. And we have you know, great companies like Beckett right here in our community that are helping to drive some of that. Um, so just that, that combined effort, and really that's what's pretty unique about this speed to market accelerator that we're doing with Nortec in the advanced energy arena. It's just from the beginning, how do we work side by side with the economic development professionals 
learning their language, they're learning our language, and collectively we're helping those companies think about the talent implications to, to drive that technology innovation forward. And, and hopefully help make sure that if they, when they are ready to go to market and build those components, that they know that Northeast Ohio is a good place to, to do that. And, and it can make good, uh, it, it makes sense financially that they can have a viable business model to do you know, that. I wanted to react to something Terry said. Mm -hmm. I said um, uh, leadership, hard work, I think I'd add a third, that's partnership. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, uh, Lorraine yeah, County absolutely. Community College, whether it's NORTEC, yeah. whether it's Magnet, whether yeah. it's Jumpstart, whether it's NASA, mm -hmm. whether it's private firms, right. uh, you've been able to, even the federal government, you've been able to reach beyond the boundaries oh, absolutely. Yeah. of the campus and yeah. linked to other academic institutions, other economic development organizations in a very aggressive way. We're going to take a time out, take a short break, and when we come back we're going to talk about the Congresswoman's role in the Department of Energy and how it affects you right here in our county. Welcome back to our conversations with Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. Marcy, I'm sure you have the opportunity to be on many committees in your role as a Congresswoman. Uh, you're on a committee with the Department of Labor, correct? Uh, I actually am not. I am on defense and I am... No, I'm sorry, not labor. Energy. I, I, uh, oh. I've got all these different... <laughs> yeah, I'm, that was my mistake. But energy, yes. why, why, did, why, why is that a target of yours? And, and you're well, a lead player in that... In that because of the strategic vulnerability of our country and um, how since the oh, Second World War, over a period of decades, America became very reliant on imported energy from places that are very undemocratic and share none of our political values, none. And um, to see the um, uh, complicated position that has placed our nation in. Um, and how it's compromised our ability to invest here at home. So I think there, if this burden could be lifted off of our country and we could become energy uh, independent again at home, at home, and we are capable of inventing our way out of this. So I'm completely fired up. I could talk for three hours about this. You don't want to hear that three-hour speech. How but, long of a process will that be? Uh, sir, if I were in charge of the whole thing, it would have happened already. Uh -huh. But um, it... Um, uh, requires new invention. It, inquire, it, it requires first an understanding of who, when you go to the gas pump and you buy that, who gets the money in the end. Uh, it requires allowing more exploration in our country, but at some point the oil will run out. And even natural gas, though we will have this boom now, will run out. It requires an all of the above strategy. I agree with President Obama on that that we have to be bringing up new energy technologies and that's why you see me as a the lead uh, Democrat on my subcommittee of energy and water supporting uh, geothermal, um, all kinds of biomass, biofuels production, uh, all, whether it's solar, whether it's wind, um, cryogenic hydrogen, new forms of um, energy that will help to augment America's energy needs as we move forward because the last time I looked we're not losing population. We're going we now have about 310 million people in this country by 2050 500 million. How are we going to power the place? So we're seeing new car designs coming out. That's very important to us here in Northern mm -hmm. Ohio. Mm -hmm. Who can win the, who's going to win the fight for the new engine? Who's going to whatever power um, uh, system is attendant to those automobiles? Who's going to win that fight? And who wins that fight will be a world leader. On the leadership point, how has Lorain County Community College looked at the future of energy and types of programs that we're offering for our students to be to be on the on the front edge of that? Sure. I was sure. I was in a place this past weekend where I was driving and there was a wind farm, mm -hmm. and I saw some guys putting up the actual turbines, mm -hmm. and I thought of our students here at Lorain County Community College who are getting degrees mm -hmm. in that alternative energy, and they know how to service turbines and they know how to you know right. build them and and I and I thought 
I thought that was a neat thing, that I actually mm -hmm. saw it in action and that I knew that our students here at the college were, were really on the cutting edge of that, on the, front, on the front of that. So Terry, can you talk about that, how we're preparing those students and what types of programs? Sure, absolutely, and you're right. We are on the cutting edge with our alternative energy programs, and we have both wind and solar. Um, and I think that's probably where people's minds go to immediately. But we also want to let students or potential students know that there's a, a full range of uh, studies that impact energy and energy independence, although the, they may not have the word energy in them. And this may be programs like our actually just recently approved microelectrical mechanical systems. This is a um, uh, at the sensor level, uh, but at the truly the, the microscopic level, uh, you're going to be learning about both mechanical and electrical systems. But at that really small nano level, these are the types of things that are driving our cell phones and our our apps, uh, you know, our our new um, tablets. But also are being used certainly to drive a lot of the technological innovation to lower our energy use and and create new technologies that uh, for the future. Um, and certainly we can't forget just the traditional engineering pathway. Uh, we need engineers. We need more of our, our uh, young people to consider STEM fields, science, technology, engineering, and math. So we have the two-year associate degree programs that transfer and students can um, either complete their four-year degree here through the university partnership program. We have great engineering programs with like University of Toledo and Cleveland State and others. Or you can transfer. So I think really recognizing that there are certificate programs if you want to just figure out how to get to work as fast as possible. We have our two-year programs and then we have our transfer programs. Um, but lots of demand in many ways if you want to be a part of that, that, um, that future energy independent uh, economy. You know, too many companies mm -hmm. say to me, oh, Congresswoman, yeah. uh, approve uh, additional visa programs so we can bring in yeah. engineers from other countries, mm -hmm. so we can bring in yeah. scientists from other countries. And I have students say, Marcy, I can't get a job. Mm -hmm. I'm going, hey, wait a minute, where's the mismatch here? Uh, are we yeah. not educating our students to the jobs that are out there in the workplace? Mm -hmm. And so I mention, uh, you know, with uh, complimenting you uh, mm -hmm. on your efforts to try to match positions right with what's available. I was just over at Honeywell, uh, one of their major mm -hmm. headquarters, and I'm sure some of your students will end up working for them <laughs> in good. some capacity, uh, yeah. or one of their downstream suppliers, because that is where, in terms of energy efficiency, where the market is moving. I was just over at Graftech recently, and what did they say to me? Marcy, we can't get at the engineers we need. Mm -hmm. And I'm going, oh, how do we get partnership degrees that link to um, our engineering schools? Uh, why should we be hiring people from other countries when we could be building that capacity in our own students? And that's exactly the conversation happening through the Speed to Market Accelerator where we are, um, as we're, frankly, as taxpayers, taxpayers making an investment in these companies, having those kinds of conversations around saying, you know, we do have 50-year-old engineers in our community, you know, or 40, but we have people of all ages that are unemployed, maybe they've been laid off, and they might need some specific training in new technologies to meet the needs of those companies in, in that advanced energy cluster. So we're having those conversations. It's sort of that both and. Um, as we work with you to build your talent pipeline, looking at getting more uh, students, traditional students through that four-year degree and advanced degrees, take a look at some of these transitioning adults as well and, and help us help them to, to compete for those jobs. You That's know one of the anomalies that I found yeah. in the Department of Energy and that is that for the training of workers to work in that field mm -hmm. even though we have many labor unions that have founded their own craft schools they are not recognized and they need partnerships with local community colleges mm -hmm. Um, but I represent so many advanced training programs mm -hmm. uh, for electrical workers, boiler makers, plumbing and pipe fitters. I look at these different fields and I said, how is this possible that their schools aren't part of your array that you work with? We're going to be doing an energy symposium here in uh, the fall uh, mm -hmm. involving the Department of Energy and by golly, I want some of those uh, training academies established Absolutely. by trade unions uh, involved because they're doing the work. Uh, you mentioned turbines. A lot of times uh, you have to learn how to walk way up there. Not everybody sure. can work that high yeah. in the air and do some of that work yeah. and there are turbines being invented now where the actual storage is in the base. Mm -hmm. So the invention of that, mm -hmm. wouldn't it naturally mm -hmm. flow from many of the academies 
uh, that the trade unions have established, working in sure. partnership with academic institutions and those involved in research and development? Absolutely. Marcy, you mentioned the uh, Energy Symposium, and I want to get to that. And we've got about four minutes left okay. in our uh, conversation with, with both of you today. But before we get to that, before we close with that, um, Terry, you had mentioned uh, MEMS technology. Mm -hmm. And when our Richard A. Desich uh, Smart Commercialization Center was, was opened last fall, um, one of the speakers talked about the history of Silicon Valley mm -hmm. and how everything was developed there computer-wise and it just mm -hmm. turned into this, this hub, this area that everybody recognizes as, as the place where it's happening. And he said, why can't Lorain County become what the Silicon Valley is to MEMS technology? Why can't we become a hub center for MEMS right. technology? Two years in a row here at Lorain County Community College, we've hosted a national MEMS technology conference where professors, researchers, business owners, developers from all over the country have come, mm -hmm. um, recognized authors and speakers. That's right. Can we become, is it a pipe dream, Congresswoman and Terry, to become you know, the MEMS technology value, valley of, uh, of the country? Absolutely not. I think we are. We just have to grow it. Memsville. I think <laughs> <the word. laughs> we call it Memsville. Memsville. That's exactly <laughs> what we called it. Yeah. You know, this a, it's a. I think it's a. It is the moment for Lorain County with our, our uh, where we are in terms of energy, the, the future of energy and clean energy, the, the potential for the Great Lakes wind turbine project, Leco. Um, the combination of how sensors are just transforming every industry from landscaping to building systems to our cell phones I mean uh, and, and sensor technology which is driven by those microelectrical systems so uh, that's what, what MEMS means that's right <laughs> and what the smart center does is just create that space to allow teams of engineers and product innovators to come in and and um, test these new products that have been developed out of our universities which have great research labs and figure out how to package them and see if they're going to be so we have so many training opportunities not only for the technology but how to how to teach our students how to innovate you know in my work on my subcommittee what i found there are very few people from the great lakes that ever rise to these positions all right so what did i just discover one none of the federal mm -hmm. research labs are located in this region mm. on the energy front and so I have to go visit these labs. One of them I'm going to go visit in Livermore, California uh, next month. Um, they just laid off 500 physicists. Mm -hmm. Now, they can develop partnerships with us, which is why we're going to have the fall conference here in this region. Uh, but the point is that academic talent is placed elsewhere in the country. Right. And the synergy that comes from living and working mm -hmm. and so forth, um, we have to mimic that somehow, even though we don't have those institutions here. We've got about 25 seconds left. <laughs> it's been a great conversation, but I want to get in the energy symposium. So if, if quickly in 20 seconds, if you could say what your goals are for that, and, and it's going to be hosted here at Lorain County Community College? It's going to be hosted probably at NASA, okay. um, but uh, we're working on the location. We're inviting in all of the nation's top energy labs here mm. to meet with our universities and our companies and our high scientists to say, how do we advance mm -hmm. new energy technologies here? How do we develop more robust partnerships with you, even though you're not located in this part of the country? Congresswoman, thank you. <laughs> okay, thank you. The conversations are always great. Uh, thank you to Terry Sandu, the Executive Director for Workforce Development here at Lorain County Community College and our Director of our Entrepreneurship Innovation Center, as well as a thank you to Congresswoman Marcy Kaptur. This has been Lorain County Community College inside our television studio. Have a great day.